Hello everybody and welcome to Julia's Quick and Simple Recipes. I'm Julia and this is my kitchen. Welcome in. And today I'm going to make you a wonderful meatloaf. Now, there's one thing you have to learn about meatloaf is that there is no one recipe for meatloaf. I can make a lemon chicken and there's one or two or three recipes. Meatloaf is endless. You can do all different kinds of stuff for it. All you have is the base and whatever flavor you want to do with it. So you can be as creative as you'd like. So I'm going to start today by going to basically today show you the techniques needed to make a meatloaf and the basic ingredients that you need to make a meatloaf. There are types of ingredients you need, not specific ones. Now, of course, you need a meat. And today, I'm going to use what's what, I'm going to use a normal mixture of meat. The normal mixture for a meatloaf is um, half uh, beef, half pork, which is right what I have right here, and half veal. So I'm going to take the veal, pop that in there, and I use my brand new handy dandy hand grinder and ground up some steak. Ground up a nice uh, chuck roast a couple days ago, so I'm going to take some of this and pop that in there. Okay. I still need to get the hang of it, really, but it'll work for what we want. Okay. Okay. And there we go. Now, oh, well, let's let's get that in a bigger bowl here. All right. So you know what? I could use a little teeny bit more of the beef, and I will put this stuff back in the fridge when I get a chance. When this is in the oven, because this doesn't take long to prepare. So make sure to every step that you're washing your hands. Look at how gross. <laughs> So I'm going to go wash my hands. Now, you need a couple of things for a good meatloaf. You need a binder. Now, binder is basically what it says. It binds us together. Unlike a hamburger, there are a couple of differences between hamburgers. With a hamburger, you can just take ground chuck, put it together into a patty, and throw it right on the grill. This, you can't do that. There's no way to do that, and if you do, you'll end up with ground beef in the oven. Oven cooked ground beef. You, you don't want that. What you need, some kind of a binder. Now the typical binder is eggs. Usually for a recipe like this, you put one egg in there. I'm not gonna do that. My mom taught me this recipe years ago. And actually, she can't eat it because she's allergic to the hot peppers um, in this to use salsa. Now, this is um, a nice hot salsa that I got from Fresh Fields, or Whole Foods, sorry. Um, and it's really nice, really hot, and it worked perfectly for this recipe. So, I'm not going to put all of this in there. I'm going to put a good amount of it in there. And that will act as my binder. You can use any kind of liquid like this, any sauce. You can use a um, just a tomato sauce if you want. And if you're doing some other kind of meat for this, you can use a, a sauce of some sort that works well with it. Okay? Now, we also need a couple of other things. We're going to need onions. The onions are right here. Now, we need texture in it. So I like throwing some onions in for texture. Now, some people do saute these beforehand. I don't like to because these are gonna cook anyway, so it's fine. And I completely and totally forgot, we need some mushrooms. Nice can of mushrooms. Now, you're probably wondering why I'm using canned mushrooms. Well, canned mushrooms for this work the best in my opinion because they don't lose any volume when they cook. Not as much. Because, as you probably know, as I 
just quickly drain these out. As you know, these kind of mushrooms, they're already uh, par cooked in a way. So they are nice and ready to go. They won't lose much volume. So we're gonna pop one small can of these in here. And we're gonna throw some garlic in. This is about four cloves of garlic, but I'm only going to use half of it because I need some for another recipe. So that, that'll work right here. And we also need, let me grab, some breadcrumbs. Oh, right up front. How convenient. And look at this, right on front is a picture of meatloaf. Hey, how convenient. So, you, all, you need some kind of um, bread breadcrumb. Some people use uh, regular bread soaked in milk. It's all a matter of taste. So I'm going to sprinkle some of this on top. There we go. And I'm going to salt and pepper it too because we need to season this somehow. And we're also just going to take some of my uh, Italian herbs, Italian herb seasoning, just a little bit, not much, and sprinkle it in there. Okay. And let's see, do I want to throw oregano in it? Yeah, let's throw a little bit of oregano in. Since we're going for the Mexican flair, throw a little bit of oregano okay. and we're ready to use the best tools on the planet to mix this up, our hands. Get this all nice and mixed. I can move that out of the way. There you go. Now you can also add carrots if you want. You can add all different kinds of stuff. I like onions and mushrooms in mine. You can do whatever you want. This is, as I said, this is to taste. There's nothing you can do wrong. Nothing wrong that you can put in this. There is no wrong ingredient for a meatloaf. Okay. And that looks thoroughly mixed. All right. Now, while my hands are still dirty, right now, I'm going to take this off onto my plate. Now, probably wondering why I'm not using a, a uh, loaf pan. Well, loaf pans are not made to make meatloaf. They're made to make loaves of bread. And loaves of bread don't need a way to drain. So that's why I use a cookie sheet like this. Now, if I had a cookie sheet that had lips on it, sides on it, I'd use it, but I don't. So just gonna freeform this and I put some, uh, some aluminum foil down made a little lip on the side, and we're good to go. And I'm gonna go wash my hands and be right back. All right, now we're gonna glaze this. What you have to do, you have to get something like, ketchup is the, is the traditional glaze for this. And it works great because it's got a lot of, sh it's got the sugars in it, it's sweet, it's got a, it, it will enforce the tomato flavor in this. So I'm gonna, just put it on. You want to be pretty liberal with this. And you want to brush this on. It'll be the, the sugars in the tomato sauce will caramelize. 
and it's going to be absolutely wonderful. Okay, and now I'll move this out of the way and I will stick this in the oven at 350 for about half an hour. We'll check it after about 20 minutes. Work, uh, we'll add some more ketchup glaze and be right back. 